In this video, we're going to talk about the acoustic vocoder and how to get it up and running in a Mixcraft project. Specifically, we're going to talk about the vocoder track, track type, which allows you to really quickly and easily set up a vocoder. Without getting super deep into how a vocoder works, the basic idea is that it allows you to take one sound and impart the timbral characteristics of another sound onto the existing sound. Now that may sound a little complicated, but let me break it down a little more easily. The sound that's getting modified is called a carrier, and you can think of that as carrying through. It's best to use a pretty basic sound that has a lot of timbral content. In our case, we're using a sawtooth wave, which is very bright and has lots of timbral content. And the modulator is the signal that is affecting the carrier. So the modulator, in our case, is going to be my voice talking through a microphone. So the timbral characteristics of my voice get imparted upon that sawtooth wave. So with the vocoder on, it sounds like this. So I'm going to start at the beginning with nothing and show you how to use a Mixcraft vocoder track to set everything up for using a vocoder. Over here in the plus track button, I'm going to click this and I'm going to say insert vocoder track. And you can see it says vocoder submix. And that means we have two child tracks contained within the vocoder submix track. You can see one of these is an audio track. And this is the microphone coming in as the modulator. You also see that meter moving. And as you can see, in addition to this fabulous mic that I'm recording the video audio through, I also have this fashionable headset mic on. And the headset mic is what's plugged into my audio interface, and that's what's controlling the vocoder. If I click on the audio input settings arrow over here, we can go to Fire Studio, Stereo Input 1, 2. In fact, all I need is the left channel because I'm only going into input 1. And now you can see it goes to both. So... Like I said, you'll need to have a microphone plugged into your audio interface on the vocoder modulator channel. Moving down to our vocoder carrier track, this has an instrument already on it. If I click on it, this opens up the instrument preset window, and you can see it says vocoder saw synth brass. This is using the G-Sonic Renegade analog synth, and this creates the sawtooth synth sound that we're using as a carrier. And if I click on this, this is the acoustic vocoder. You can see I have a level coming in from my modulator in slash microphone, although that doesn't necessarily have to be a microphone. With the microphone audio set up on the modulator track, you should be able to hold down keys on your keyboard and hear the vocoder. Check, check, check. I am using the vocoder. Yay. It's probably a good idea at this point to open the vocoder and make sure all your levels are optimized. Now this one right here is the modulator in, as it says, and this adjusts how much microphone is going to it. And you can see there's a meter right there, and it's a little low right now, so let's turn that guy up and get a little better level. Moving down here, we have the carrier input, which is the instrument, and that's gonna be our vocoder carrier right here. So if I play the keyboard, you're not gonna hear anything right now, but you'll see it going in here. And I'm gonna turn that up. Check, 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 ooh, check, 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 check. And we've got a master volume right here, which is exactly what it says. This is pretty much the same as adjusting the volume of the instrument right here, or in the master submix volume up here. But let's step away from this for a second and show how to record. You'll want to make sure both tracks are armed. So we're gonna arm the carrier track, and then we're gonna make sure that the carrot is right at the beginning. And when I play it back. And once the track is made, you can edit the audio or the MIDI any way you like, just like a normal track. You can also listen to the modulator audio on its own because it records clean like any other mic track. So I'm gonna turn down the vocoder. I'm gonna take the arm button off. 
and turn this up. So now when I play this, you'll hear my talking. Here I am making a vocoder track. I sound great. Now you've probably noticed that these character sliders bear a resemblance to a traditional graph EQ. And even though they're not really an EQ, they pretty much sound the same because each one of these sliders adjusts the volume of one of the bandpass filter networks in the vocoder. And the bandpass filters go from low to high in frequency. So if I start turning down the low ones, check, 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 vocodering, it gets thinner. And if I turn the low ones up, it gets fatter sounding, fatter, 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 fatter. And here my high end gets more clear and so on. Over here we have the bandwidth knob. Now, as I mentioned a second ago, each one of these is a bandpass filter. And that means that each one of these filters lets a certain narrow band of frequencies through. Say, for example, this would be 60 to 100 and 100 to 150 and 150 to 250. Those aren't the actual numbers, but you get the idea. So what the bandwidth knob does is it adjusts the size of the window, if you will, of all of these filters all at once. And so it just gives a different sound, which is fun to play with. Check, 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 check. Now, this may be more useful when you're doing things other than vocoding your voice. You can really hear it more on drum loops and that kind of thing, but it's definitely something that's fun to play around with. And over here we have the decay knob. Now, if you're familiar with the decay knob on synthesizers, it's a pretty similar effect. It adjusts how fast the filters recover and shut down and effectively adjusts how long the sound sustains for. So if I talk, you can hear it fades slow, whereas I turn it down and it gets real tight. So this is good for rhythmic kind of things. If I'm making ridiculous drum kind of sounds, down here we have the sibilance knob, and uh, if you're familiar with the classic Wayne's World sketch <laughs> with Tom Hanks, uh, you know about sibilance. In the case of our vocoder, the reason why there's a sibilance knob is that the filters in a vocoder aren't really good with very high-frequency sounds like S's and K's and that sort of thing they tend to remove those frequencies altogether. So in order to restore these hissy sounds, the sibilance knob adds in some high-pass filtered white noise when the modulator input detects sibilant sounds. This improves the intelligibility of speech. And again, I'm gonna get away from my big video mic here so you can hear it a little better. It's kind of a subtle effect, but it's helpful for intelligibility. Check, check, check. It's the sibilance, 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 sibilance. Finally down here we have the Formant switch and what this does is when it's on it holds whatever the current incoming timbral characteristics are of the modulator. If I hold down some keys now it just stays even though I'm talking and the timbre is changing. If I turn it off it'll go back to its normal sound. This is particularly useful if you use MIDI assignment to assign a sustain pedal. And the reason why it's useful is if you want to hold something for a really long time, say you're doing some sort of choral thing like, ah, okay, so I just click the switch and it's holding that. Now, if I was to try to hold that without the switch, I would probably run out of breath and pass out. So Formant Hold lets you hold certain vowel sounds for as long as you want. Like I said, this is very useful when it's assigned with a MIDI controller, um, probably a sustain pedal, although you could use a mod wheel or a switch or whatever on your MIDI controller. When we made that vocoder track over here, it automatically sets everything up so you don't necessarily have to worry about side chaining, but it is very helpful to understand how it works. So basically what's happening is on this track over here, we've got that raw synthesizer and that makes our sawtooth wave. And then that's going through the vocoder, which is an effect plugin. And up here, as we discussed, we have that microphone input. Now, the really important thing is that we need to get this microphone input into the vocoder somehow. And the way that's happening is via the sidechain. Now, sidechain lets you use any track in Mixcraft to route into a plugin or instrument. Now, only some instruments and plugins support sidechain inputs. 
and of course the acoustic vocoder does. So if I pop up this little menu right here, you can see that it says vocoder modulator. Now that means that this track right here is getting routed into the modulator in, and that's why we can vocode. But I could also select any other track in Mixcraft, for example, beat one over here, and I'm gonna choose dry, and now when I hit play, I'm gonna turn the volume down, and hold down some keys on the keyboard. And the drum loops the modulator. So now let's go back to the sidechain source. If I wanna switch it back to the microphone, I can put this back on vocoder modulator. And you probably notice this is dry, pre-fader, post-fader. This is kind of an important thing too. These let you define where the signal is tapped from. If I choose dry, that means that the signal that's getting routed into the modulator input of the vocoder is not affected by anything on this channel. It's not affected by the volume fader. It's not affected by effects on inserts. It's just completely raw what's coming into your audio interface. Or in the case of uh, a pre-recorded track like this beat over here, same thing. Not affected by fader, panning, nothing. If I choose pre-fader, it's not going to be affected by the fader level or panning, but it will travel through the mixer's gain, compressor, drive, and EQ sections. If I choose post-fader, it's going to go through all the effects in the mixer, gain, compressor, drive, the EQs, and the pan and volume slider in the mixer are going to affect how much signal gets to uh, the sidechain. So for most purposes, dry is the best choice because then you won't be controlling the level in a bunch of different places, but it is important to pay attention to that.